Okay, ready to go, Beyond? Awesome. All right. Now, I'm Justin Franson here with Jeremy Neednoggle, the son of Jonathan Neednoggle, one of my favorite authors, Brain Types. You know, he's, their website's braintypes.com. And I have a surprise for you today. This is when I first heard about Jonathan Neednoggle. Is Sunday, August 9th, 1998. Wow. That's old. <laughs> 1998. The front page of the LA Times sports section. Yeah, I saved it. But it talks about that brain matters. And while most athletes possess great skill, physical skills in the mind, it's a mind that separates the best from the rest. So it goes over what Jonathan Neednoddle, aka the brain expert says, everyone has a preference of the pairings. And he goes on to type all these top performers from the Joe Montana's, Greg Maddox, the Michael Jordan's, and the Jack Nicholas's on to actually telling us in advance without telling the person who would be the biggest success, Peyton Manning versus Ryan Leaf, who would be one of the bigger failures in the history of the NFL. And he really predicted that. And that's how powerful brain typing is. So we're so excited to have you on as you're really driving the ship with your dad now and and just Jeremy's really taken over a lot of the aspects of it. They're currently working with which teams? Uh, the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia Eagles. So, so football and the NBA. Football and NBA, two of the biggest teams. Did you win a Super Bowl ring? Uh, I don't think they sent us one actually. Uh, okay. I don't think they did. You got one. We got they... a thank you letter, but not a ring. <laughs> They actually won the Super Bowl, and I know the Patriots had a different brain type person that they were working with, and Nee Noggles really? won yeah. over over theirs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so pretty interesting stuff, you guys. This goes way way back. But uh, Dean Brittenham, my mentor, we had Abby Spears, who's professional tennis player for years, and you were big with which tennis coach? Vic Braden. Vic Braden for yeah. many many years. So. Their history in sports is just legendary. The teams, the athletes that they've worked with, it's beyond uh, impressive. And so I got your book. He's actually brain typed me and my family. Is that about That's right? right. <laughs> so this is his comprehensive uh, report on my brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm considered the strategist. So, mm -hmm. uh, but. Anyhow, you guys, he does brain typings for families, which has been so helpful for me and my daughter and my wife and, and our dynamic of cultivating the best out of her and us. And so I wanna turn over to you and have you talk with that big intro and that deep, deep rooted history in sports and family work. Mm -hmm. uh, how did your dad and you guys get into it and how did you grow to be so gifted in it as well? Well, that's a big question with a long answer, but the short of it is that uh, my father and I both have a wiring, a predisposition to see little nuances in people. And uh, years ago, almost 30 years ago, my father was studying people for his work, uh, psychometric profiles, under going through the different uh, methods of understanding people, and he found uh, one particular uh, assessment method to be most helpful, which was developed by Carl Jung and then later by Isabel and Catherine Briggs Myers, and uh, basically, he picked up that inf information and uh, took it a step further, which is where we are today. By um, by his, he, he coached over 50 youth teams, over 600 children over the over the span of about 20 years. And in that process, he saw in children uh, pr uh, character traits that he felt were consistent with the Myers Briggs or the Union model uh, that used to be called personality typing or um, Myers Briggs, whatever you want to call it, but. Uh, we now call it brain typing because we know there's a genetic basis for it and that we can actually uh, differentiate between people based on phenotypical expression. So what we see can tell us what's going on in the brain. Wow. And, uh, so really we've gone from what we used to think was malleable, you know, the personality type, to what we now know is, is hardwired in, in, in who you are from birth. So 
Um, but you asked how it came about. Really, it was a span of 30 years, just a lot of micro progressions. And uh, my father was just, a, he is a stickler for seeing little nuances in people. And so he started to add those up and to quantify them and to use that earlier model to build upon what, where we are today. Um, so we're really not, we're not all that impressive, but, we, but our, our information is, and it's so helpful. So we're, we're, the, we're the kind of people that will, you know, be, be able, we're the, the, the students of, uh, we like to study people, and that's where, why we've gotten to where we are. We both have the same wiring, and it's, my grandmother has it, and her, her, her mother had it, actually. So it's, it's genetic, and it's hereditary, and it's, it's fascinating that how it works out. And it's how you're brain typed. But I, I have to interject, he is very impressive and so is his dad. And what they do, their information is phenomenal. So when, let's go over, let's talk about my brain type and, and just dive yeah. into what it looks like yeah. with someone with a brain type. So I am a strategist, right? Okay, what does that mean? That's the nickname we give you, the strategist, uh, formerly called the ENTP. We've changed the lettering to be more descriptive of brain activity. Uh, but we also call you the, the 13. We've come up with a number system, 1 through 16, just to make it easy for people. And so you're a 13, which means that um, you have uh, basically brain typing addresses two parts of the whole person. Okay, so there's your personality and then there's your, your, your blueprint, your DNA makeup for who you are. And so it's the, we, we like to say it's the bifurcation of the total person addressing both aspects because there's who you are from birth, nature, and then there's who you are, how you've been developed over time, your nurture. And so when you say, who am I, what's my brain type, I can tell you what that is, but it's also important to know what's happened since you were born. And so what brain typing does is it tells you your hardwiring, and then it helps you to be able to differentiate between what has been learned over time. A, a, like essentially a persona. Yeah, a persona, exactly. So that's, that's it, your persona versus brain type. And both are meaningful, but we like to put an estimated per, uh, percentage at something like 60, 40 brain type over persona. Um, so your persona is a huge component in who you are, but it's a smaller part of who you are. So when I say you're a 13 or an ENTP or an FCIR, which is our terminology now, um, that means a lot. It puts you in a category, but it doesn't mean you're not unique. And you're very unique. 40% of you is just unique to you. Something like that is what we believe the percentage roughly. But so, uh, so there's a lot we can tell you about how you'll be. We can, we can predict and project a lot. But then there's a, another component which is unique just to you. So brain typing doesn't try to answer all the questions about a person and why they are the way they are, but it answers the main uh, the main um, motivational and the main, um, uh, what am I trying to say? It basically governs who you are. In, in, if you have a normal brain, it explains your, your normal behavior for the most part. <laughs> awesome. So not everybody has a normal brain, but assuming that we're all under uh, working, working well, then yes, that's what we can tell you. So, so I'm more front brain, so yes. more of an extrovert. That's right. So uh, you're front brain dominant, which means you like to make things happen. You don't like to sit around. You have a, a lot of energy in the day. You like to plan, think ahead. Usually, um, there's a lot of misconceptions about front and back brain or E and I, extroversion, introversion. But overall, it has to do with brain activity, which usually translates into being more uh, talkative too and more outgoing or more energetic in that way. Um, and then the, the uh, so we have the, the front and the back, and anyone who studies the brain can tell you the different traits that go along with each. But secondarily, you're, you're uh, intuitive or conceptual, which means you're bigger picture. You, you, uh, your head's not in the clouds necessarily, but you're at least seeing the big picture and everything you do, you're seeing possibilities and conceiving new ideas. Yeah. Um, and it's easy for me to talk to you because I'm actually almost your opposite, so not everybody is that way. Uh, thirdly, you're, you're thinking or you're, you're, uh, you're into inanimate things of life. Like you appreciate people and your relationships, but really your brain is, is dealing with concepts and principles and how things work and why things are the way they are and looking at it a little more analytically and um, systematically. That's the way the thinking mind works. That's the way the inanimate brain works. So inanimate versus animate. And then lastly, uh, when I said P or right brain dominant, which is R, uh, that's so the ENTP or the FCIR, your last facet has to do with whether you're right or left brain dominant. And um, there's so much that comes from that and how it, it uh, exp the, the right or left brain dominance basically governs the first three facets of who you are in a big way. So. Um, also, handedness has a lot to do with whether that's enhanced or restricted too. So if you're right-handed or left-handed, that will also be a big input. So um, I could talk a long time about your type, but in a nutshell, yeah, you, you, your type actually makes the world go round and, and is very productive in society and is very uh, has the most aptitude, arguably, in today's structures, the way society is today, your type tends to run, run things. <laughs>
And then how about yeah. sports wise? So I consider myself a decent athlete. Uh -huh. I ended up getting hurt, so I, uh -huh. I didn't play tennis in college like I want to do uh -huh. or the next level. Yeah, so your type is not necessarily the most gifted with your, your motor skills, but you have a great mind, which can usually uh, aid uh, in athletics. So, so if you start early, then you can have the motor skill proficiency that you need to be great in, in any sport, but, uh, but your mind is, would be your, your, your greatest asset as an athlete. Um, and actually, because of today's sports have become so complex and, and the offenses and the defenses, well, we're talking professionally, but anyway, I was gonna say your type uh, rises to the occasion with, with uh, more complex sports. Um, and so we even see that um, in the professional, sports today are not where they used to be you know, 30 years ago. So, so your type has actually found a lot of prominence in today's professional sports world. And, um, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, now, how about what is the most gifted out? Like, what's a Michael Jordan like brain type look like, or a Tiger Woods brain yeah, type? Yeah, well, it just depends on what the, the sport the requires. Sport. Um, and there's so many facets that go into success. So we, uh, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods are very different actually, and yet they're both dominant in their sports. So that tells you a lot. Um, so it really depends on the position and what's required, and whether you need a leader in that position or not, or whether you need intensity and you need. Uh, tenacity or whether you can be more free-flowing and fluid like Tiger was um, you know his his swing was the model for the last 15 20 years because of how smooth and loose and he he, he is and, and that's not something that Michael Jordan could replicate even though they're both great athletes uh, they both have different motor skills and they both have different um, how they manage those skills uh, it's, it's very different so so if I were to name the top athletes in each sport they might not even be the same brain type so that really? tells you a lot about um, how it's specific to what's required in the sport as far as what types excel and which other types have to work harder at excelling. So are, are like a Tiger Woods, because we just had the duo between Phil Mickelson and Tiger, are they a similar brain type? They're actually opposite. They're, They're opposite. opposite. Oh, that's crazy. Total polar opposite, yeah. Except Mickelson's left-handed, so he's a little more fluid than he would have otherwise been if he uh, if he golfed right-handed. So they both have that fluidity about them, that looseness that you know can get them far in golf. But other than that, they're they're totally opposite. Wow. Exactly. The way they think and the way they process information. Now, how about a Kelly Slater, like one of the greatest surfers? Yeah, yeah. Dominic Kelly Slater. Yeah. Oh, uh, he he. Uh, well, he's your brain type, so that says really? a lot for you. Yeah, he is, and uh, so. You know, he's just been dominant. I don't know what to say about him. He's the Michael Jordan of surfing, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, he, he uh, I don't know what to say about him, honestly. <laughs> he's, he's amazing. Just, yeah, he really is. Yeah, no matter I like the water and gravitate towards that yeah. and surfing as well, that's cool. And surfing, yeah, it requires a, a lot of pain tolerance and even getting up in the cold, early and getting in the cold water before you become great. And that's something mm -hmm. your type is really good at, is, uh, is, is having a high pain tolerance and, and true. tuning out what's right in front of you in order to, to follow what's inside your mind and what you're trying to accomplish. And so um, a lot of surfers, a lot of top surfers have that ENTP or FCIR wiring, the 13, we call it the number 13. Wow, that's awesome. So you guys, that gives you a good idea of what's going on with this whole brain typing in the sports world. Now, as far as family-wise, share with us about you know families and how yeah. do you go in and, and work the intricacies of, of a family, like with my wife and daughter. And yeah. my, we're actually all the same brain type, but that's not always the case. Right, right. Um, well, everybody has a system with which they parent or understand their children. And what brain typing does is it gives you just a... a a firm grip on why your children are behaving the way they are so that you can then decide how you want to handle that. And um, we can assess children that are a year old. Um, I've assessed my five children before they became one year old. Um, and that's helped us to be able to have more forgiveness, more empathy, it's to just crazy. know whether we're going to crush their spirit or not by, you know, saying no to this or that or whether we, how we need to treat them with kid gloves or more firmly, you know, and just understanding how they are from a young age is invaluable and that's where our heart is with helping people is just helping with children because it's such a big part of society and um, so I'm not sure what else you asked on that point yeah just parenting wise and how we can see what they're doing and how we respond to it yeah just well also you can project who they're going to become like in, in their latter years so that's just so helpful to know that You've got this, it's almost like with any dog breed, you can know, you know where they're going. And it's, it's the same with uh, brain typing with children is that you can understand that when they, what, the, what their interests will be likely when they're older. And so if you want to encourage them in that when they're younger, then it just saves a lot of heartache and headache and um, 
it just you know it's more fluid that way to, to know what you've got and and it's usually a combination of mom and dad since it's hereditary but sometimes you know, grandparents genes are passed down and we see different anomalies but brain typing is pretty predictive in that way with hereditary uh, the heredity of the parents you know passing down to the children so um, Wow. Now, do you offer services where you actually can brain type people remotely? We do. And you can send us a video or post it online privately or however you want to do it. But we, we do assessments regularly uh, from all over the world where people send us video. And, um, and we can do all we, we, all we need is about five minutes of good video footage. And we can usually assess a person's brain type and tell them all they need to know from, from that vantage point. Wow, and then what's the optimal age? I mean, if you're doing your kids before they're one, yeah. What's, well, what's we it? live with them, so we have them every day to, <laughs> to watch and observe. Um, if we don't know you that well, which is usually the case, then uh, it just depends, really, because some brain types are more outgoing, right? And so they'll show us more of who they are in a short interview, even if they're a little child, like an infant. Um, we have done that where they're under a year old or so, but probably three years old or so is probably a safe area if we don't know you well and we only have a little bit to go on. But um, really, some brain types make themselves known very quickly, even just six months old, you know, you can see a whole lot. And any parent knows what I'm talking about, that you, if you have several children, you know that even though they all come from the same mom and dad and they've had generally the same upbringing, they were different from the start. And there were so many little indicators that became more pronounced over time. And that's what we do is we help you identify those little indicators, which will become bigger later. I love it. And one of the things that I really prided myself on with our program, athleticism, builds a whole brain mm -hmm. and when you start to develop more coordination I know Jim Courier was one of Dean Brittenham's clients and when he was working with Dean he jumped from 25 to top 5 in the world in a span of 9 months mm -hmm. and to have the brain type really open up and develop more coordination, more motor skills, more whole brain ambidexterity mm -hmm. it'll help get people to a higher level so for me and my work to work with these athletes and help cultivate that coordination to to have them develop more connections from the brain to the mm. body to enhance even better brain types and, and get be a, have them be more gifted well-rounded mm -hmm. uh, and see those results has just been amazing for us mm. that's great yeah knowing what you need to do that's a big part of brain typing too is that you can help them get there but just knowing if you, if you have a, an idol or someone you emulate and that's better than you are, then you can differentiate between what your type is and what theirs is and why they're, why they're excelling as they are, and so then you can know where you want to go. So I'm uh, actually left brain dominant. Sports usually require right brain fluidity, so there are things, steps I can take like that you know about or others that, that can help me become more right brain dominant if I want to be good in a sport. So brain typing doesn't just tell you, it doesn't put you in a box and say, it doesn't say this is where you have to stay. It just says that this is where your gifts are and if you want to branch out and get better then you need to do some of these other things to, to uh, you know, balance the whole brain like you've shared with me in the past and what we, we tell people too. I love it, I love it. Now, this book, Your Keys to Sports Success and how many others uh, have, have a few others, written? Yeah, but most of it's word of mouth really. Uh, my dad's not all that... He doesn't like to write a lot of books. He just likes to, to do individual stuff. You know, he likes to go on a case by case basis and share with people in a customized way. That's really where our heart is, is just helping people. So um, we're not out to, we're not, anyway, yeah, we, we, uh, we're more interested in helping people than we are in selling product, quite honestly. But we have materials that can help people. <laughs> well, you have five kids to feed, so that's okay to, to ask for a purchase. But yeah. you guys, you can get this at braintypes.com and several of his other books, mm -hmm. and they're fantastic. And you have a monthly We have a subscription, subscription service called BT Insider, which gives weekly articles about names in the news and what their brain types are and why it matters and why it makes sense. So he'll cover all the hot topics, just everything that's going on, and then you could dive in and understand why people responded in what way. Mm -hmm. And it all dives down to your brain types. How are you born, your 16 predisposed brain types, your personas that you've, that you've grown with, no matter how you were raised. And this is just absolutely some of my favorite information. For three years, we've been, I've been, Jeremy, you gotta come and get on and I gotta talk to you because everyone needs to know this. And this is like more like so many, uh, the top guys in sports know it, but not a lot of families know it. And so, and even athletes, we had one, had one PGA golfer I worked with. He uh, jumped up 90 spots on the PGA Tour in one season, probably one of the highest 
ranking improvements. And after brain typing him, we realized that he choked the hell out of the club. And the second he softened his hands, he just uh, just just lit it up on the tour. And, and that was a lot of other stuff we did with him, balance-wise and coordination-wise. But literally, that one cue, and when I told him that from his brain type, from reading the brain type, he looked at me like I was a ghost. I'm like, well, I didn't come it up with it, this guy did. And that's just how well they know how you perform. When you're under pressure, you know, some of the brain types squeeze and grip, and then they just, they, you stop all the flow. And you want to stay fluid. That's where the Fred Couples has been so successful. Because I know a lot of other golfers have the same brain type as he, but they'll end up being a warrior and wanting to push through it versus just relaxing and being fluid. And those are the keys to winning those championships and taking yourself to that elite number one level where you just get in that flow. Yeah, any experienced athlete knows that it seems like every week something else works for them and, and it can be frustrating if you have a different solution every week that changes. And so I think what it's important to note is that with brain typing, you can be sure that these tendencies you have are actually in, uh, they're, they're innate and they're, that's why you keep experiencing them and it's not something else that's causing it. So, so you have all these uh, solutions that you might be, have used over a year's time in your sport but brain typing can help you pinpoint what are the ones that I really need to focus on because if you have too many swing thoughts or too many thoughts, it'll you know paralysis by analysis. You'll, you'll you'll it'll hurt your game if you're being too conscious. So brain typing will help you just understand these are the things that um, that I need to focus on, and I don't have to I don't have to be to, so frustrated that there's so many things that could be the problem. I want to know what is the problem so I can overcome it and get better. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, let's end on that. You guys, braintypes.com. Jonathan Neednoggle is his father who started. Jeremy Neednoggle right here is taking over and you guys give him a call. He will just make your life so much easier and allow you to go to the highest level ever. Thank you so much. Thank Jeremy. you, Justin. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Good seeing you. Thanks for going beyond with us.